good morning everyone it's another beautiful day in bali today is pull so i'm going to be training back maybe do a little bit of biceps although i might be doing arms tomorrow so i'm probably not going to touch my biceps that much my chest is feeling pretty sore today to be honest um that's expected especially when you're cutting and your calories are lower or lower uh, you're going to get more muscle soreness than when your calories are higher that's just how it goes to be honest so i feel pretty sore but it's kind of a good soreness it feels good um feels like you know when my muscles are sore like i've actually had a good session and i'm making progress it's almost like you associate that kind of pain with progress if that makes sense um, my weight today is 100 kg exactly. To be honest, uh, I thought I'd be a little bit lighter. I thought I'd be looking leaner as well. For yesterday, I only had 500 grams of chicken for meal one, and then for meal two, I had a 400 gram ribeye steak and some fruit, and that was it. So I thought I'd be lighter than I am, but I'm not, but no worries. We just keep going every single day, and some days, the scale won't move and some days there won't be noticeable changes in the mirror but if you extrapolate those results over like a week or two weeks or three weeks and you look at the overall trends that's how you know you're going in the right direction and that's how you don't kind of get over emotional and you start making changes too quickly because that's one of the biggest mistakes that people make is they'll just weigh themselves once a week or they will just ch check in the mirror once a week and then they will make rash decisions based off that one check-in but your weight and how you look can vary quite a lot on a day-to-day -day basis due to many different factors okay so just because the scale hasn't changed or you haven't seen results in the mirror doesn't mean you're not making progress hello Hi, boss. Can I get some pineapple? Yes. One? Yeah, one, please. <laughs> Rapper? You're blue. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, we got some pre workout pineapple. Oh, it's going to be a good session. Mmm. Pineapple's good. You want some of this, bro? Yeah, that's it. Cut. So, there's a power cut today, which happens quite often in Bali, more so than anywhere else that I've lived. So, there's no music but that won't really make much difference. I'm gonna start off with pull-ups. I usually start off every pull session with pull-ups just because I think pull-ups are such a good skill and exercise to be able to do. Like, it just seems quite important to be able to pull yourself up if you ever need to. For example, if you were getting chased by an animal or something like that and you needed to climb over a wall, pull-ups gonna be extremely beneficial. So. I don't think you can ever be too good at pull-ups. I'm not the best at pull-ups, but that's why I still do them pretty much every single day. Not every day, sorry, every back session. But uh, I'm not, I've not warmed up. This is gonna be like my first set, which is, which is not ideal, but it's so warm in Bali, it doesn't really matter. What I usually like to do first is just hang a little bit and really just stretch my upper body out oh yeah good so a bit of a funny story for you i was uh i matched with this girl on 
one of the dating apps and we're speaking this morning super cute super hot so i was like okay let's meet tonight at this place so we set a time place etc etc and then she messages me oh um i think you should know this because i haven't told you yet uh, i'm actually trans i was like what like no way like usually you can tell and like in asia southeast asia you got to be careful like before it just used to be just in thailand where there's a lot of lady boys but now it's quite common in bali i'd say it's quite common in philippines as well just it's definitely becoming more common in asia i think i don't know the reason why that is but usually you can tell after you've seen a few lady boys you kind of like you know what to look for but with with this girl or boy you literally could not tell whatsoever she she at least from her photos maybe it'd be different in person you'd be able to tell but from her photos she looks she looks pretty good to be fair so uh yeah if you're ever in southeast asia you got to be careful guys all right set two So when you're doing pull-ups, especially wide grip pull-ups, what you want to think about doing is bringing your bar to the chest. You're almost like arching your back a little bit. You want to feel like bringing your chest to the bar, you're going to get a better contraction in your back. It makes the exercise harder because you're using less of your biceps and more of your back, but you're going to get more out of the exercise. And with most exercises that I do, I'm not taking the path which is easiest because I don't really care about the weight that I'm lifting. I care more about the stress or the stimulus that I'm putting on the muscle. So with this one, arching your back more and bringing your chest to the bar is really gonna help place the load on the muscles that we wanna target, which is our lats. <sighs> <sighs> Oh, that's good on there. Okay, so now that I've done pull-ups, I'm doing a neutral grip lat pull-down just because I can only get like three sets of eight to 10 on the pull-ups and I feel like my lats need a bit more work. So a lat pull down with a neutral grip instead of uh, the pull-up grip that I was doing before is just gonna help add some variation but also still work my lats. So because I'm too tall for this machine, what I'm having to do is lean back more. Can you come around here somewhere? You can see like right now, my arms are fully extended, but the weight isn't lifting off here and I can't, I can't lower the seat down anymore. So what I have to do is lean back more. So now I'm in the, uh, extended position i'm in the start position and then i can perform my exercise while still getting full range of motion <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> That's enough pull downs for today. Okay, T-bar row. 
This is one of my favorite back exercises, to be honest. I haven't done this in a long time. So let's see how this one feels. So I was watching a YouTube video this morning of this new guy that I've not seen before. I'll, I'll put a screenshot on the video if I remember, but it's a guy called Samuel Anoya, I think it is. And uh, the title of the video was like, Day in the Life of a 30 Million Entrepreneur. And there's this guy, it's like a vlog, right? Where he's just going about flying first class and just dropping wisdom throughout the video. I haven't finished the video yet, but it's like a super good video. And one of the best things that he said in there was like one of the biggest mistakes he made when he was younger is believing he could do everything by himself and believing like he knew everything. And he says a lot of beginners, they kind of just have this ego where they know what to do and they become shut off to new information. Like for example, for myself, when I was younger, once I had a little bit of knowledge and I felt like I'd made a tiny little progress in the gym, I was like, oh, okay, now I know how to train. And I became shut off to any new ideas, to any new ways of doing things and to better ways of doing things. And one of the worst mistakes that you can make, not just in fitness or in business, but just generally in life as a whole, is believing you know everything. Because as soon as you have that belief that you know everything, you stop looking for better ways to do things and you stop improving and you just became you just you just get stuck and that's how you end up plateauing and i believe that's why a lot of people they get to a certain age maybe it's in their 20s or 30s and they don't seem to grow any any further past there is because they just get comfortable they're happy with the lot they're happy with what they got but they also think they know everything and they become shut off to any new ideas or better ways of doing things and i even had a coaching call with a guy last week and he was like so i was asking him you know what do you need help with why are you interested in my coaching and he's like look i already know how to train my diet could need a bit of help but my training's perfect i don't need any help with that and i was like well for you to say that your training is perfect is not a good belief to have even if it is true it's not a good belief to have because i don't believe my training's perfect because if i did i would never try anything new i would never listen to anyone else when it comes to training but whenever i train with other people i always prefer to do their session and to do their exercises because they all i, I find i always learn something new from someone else who trains now obviously if it's an absolute beginner I'm not going to be doing their workout but if it's someone who's trained for a while and even if they're not like professionals at training i still enjoy to do their exercises because they might just do things uh, in a little bit of way and you never know there might be some little nugget or some exercise or some way of performing an exercise that you don't already know and as soon as you believe that you know everything or as soon as you believe you have found the perfect way to do something is the point at which you stop growing. <clears throat> oh. Oh. Another thing that I really like about YouTube compared to like Netflix or television is that it's just real life. Like you've got this guy that I was talking about and there's many other people who are obviously doing very well, absolutely killing it in business, living sick lifestyles, and they're just posting content and giving you a glimpse into how they live. Like if you think back before the times of social media and you grew up in a small town like I did, you would never be exposed to how the rich live or how the other half live. Your view of how life should be would have just been given to you by your parents, grandparents, 
extended family members and school. And if you're not from a rich background, you don't have any rich friends, you've never been exposed to how other people in from higher economic backgrounds live, you would think that this is how life's supposed to be. If you've always lived paycheck to paycheck, that might seem normal to you. And the fact that there's people flying around on private jets three or four times a week, you just wouldn't even be able to envision that would be a possibility. But thanks to like YouTube and social media, you've got people documenting their lives and just giving you a glimpse behind the scenes of what it's actually like to live that kind of lifestyle. And for me, that's one of the best things about uh, just the internet and social media in general. <laughs> Ah, oh, fucking hell. Come on. So just did a cheeky rest pause then. Sometimes, if you want to get closer to failure, you can do as many reps as you've done and then just take a pause for like five seconds and you might be able to get a few more reps out. Okay, next exercise. I wanna do hyper extensions. When you're doing this though, you wanna make sure this is at the right height in relation to how tall you are. You want it to be just a little bit below your hips. So it's resting predominantly on the quads and then come down. And there's two ways of doing this. Some people say you shouldn't round your back, you should keep a straight back. But I disagree with that, to be honest. This for me is better when I have a rounded back and then I'm coming up. We're focusing on the lower back here, getting a nice, nice contraction on the lower back. Oh, okay. I'm good on there. That is four exercises done for back. Now we'll do one bicep exercise. How's the back looking? Looking good. Or does it need work? Ah. Okay, time for set one. Okay, set two. Honestly, 
I think I'm just going to do two sets on biceps today because I'm going to do arms tomorrow. So pretty much calling it there for this session. That was like what? Four back, back exercises, one bicep exercise. Again, this session no longer than 45 minutes. That's literally all it takes, guys. A lot of you guys saying, oh, I don't have time. Literally 30 minutes to 45 minutes, three times a week is all it takes. Everyone, every single man on this planet has time to work out 30 to 45 minutes a week. I have a delivery. Okay. Hello, bro. Hello. Yes. Uh, are you James Fitlin? I am. Okay. There she is. Yeah. So here we have it, the gains maker. Okay, chicken rest, spices, salt. What do we do? Okay, it says preheat the air fryer to 190. Place the chicken smooth side down. Well, these are fillets, so we don't need to worry about that. Flip and cook for additional two to eight minutes. Turns out. Oh, we have another delivery. Hello. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Delivery meat. Yes, meat delivery. Excellent. Yes. Beautiful steaks. Three kg of ribeyes. Oh man, these are looking good. Beef patties. So I've got how many of these? I think three kg of beef patties as well. Oh yeah. Fully loaded. This should last me a few days. Okay, I think, I think we're ready. Okay, so this is only my second time using an air fryer. The first time was a few years ago, I bought one. And the first meal that I cooked, the only meal that I cooked actually, was just some beef patties. And I absolutely ruined them. <laughs> Like the beef patty just came out like cardboard. Tasted disgusting. I was just appalled with myself that I gave the air fryer away to my friend. Um, but back then I had a barbecue at my villa. I don't have a barbecue here. So I've predominantly got the air fryer for the beef patties. But I figured I'd just try and cook the chicken breast and just see how it turns out. So, I mean, nothing special, looks okay. Actually, I'm forgetting one very important ingredient. Gotta have some of this on there. Okay, so taste test.
pretty good. I mean, I quite like pan fried chicken breast. That's usually how I cook chicken breast is just fry it in a pan. This tastes pretty similar. I would say the inside is more juicy, but the outside is drier. Whereas when you cook it in a pan, it seems like the outside is a little bit more juicy from the oil, but the inside is drier. But overall, pretty good, no complaints. Um, I'm gonna eat the rest of this now, so bye.